Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here in San Francisco for VMware Explore. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Two days of Walt, three days of Walt Walker, two sets, live events. We've got Pernima Padmanabhan, Senior Vice President and General Manager of Cloud Management at VMware. I got it right, thanks for coming on theCUBE. You got it right. Great uh, to see you. Good to be here. We're all <laughs> smiles because we were talking about your history. You once worked at Loud Cloud and we were reminiscing about the, how cloud was before cloud was even cloud. Exactly. And uh, how, <laughs> how hard it was. <laughs> and it's still hard, complexity is a big deal and uh, uh, one of the segments we want to talk to you about is the announcement around ARIA and you see cloud management, a big part of this direction to multi-cloud yes. to tame the complexity. And you know, we were quoting Andy Grove on theCUBE, let chaos reign and then reign in the chaos. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> a very famous quote in tech. <laughs> and the theme here is cloud chaos. Yes. And so we're starting to see signs of reigning in that chaos or solving complexity. And every major inflection point has this moment where yes. it gets so hard and then it kicks up to the right and grows and when it gets solved. Yeah. So we feel like we're in that moment. Uh, I couldn't agree more. And in fact, the way I say is our, uh, our, our tagline is, we make the complexity of managing cloud invisible so that you can focus on building your business apps. And you're right about the inflection point. Every time a new technology hits, you have some point of adoption, and then it becomes insanely successful, and that's when the complexity hits. <laughs> then you go and tame the complexity till the next technology. Hits, right, that's what happens. It's happened with virtualization, then it has happened with cloud, then with containerization, and now the next one will hit. And so with ARIA, uh, we said we have to fundamentally change the problem, right? We are constantly running a race of taming this uh, uh, complexity, so very excited about this announcement with, which we're doing with ARIA. And we said, imagine if I could have a view of my environment and all the dependencies. I don't need to know everything, just the environment and its dependencies, then I can now start solving problems and answering questions that I was unable to before. And newer technologies can keep coming and piling on, but I'll always be able to answer that. Help our audience understand, Aria, great name, and, and what's <laughs> new, you're welcome, what's new from, you know, it's not just V, v Realize with a new name. What's, yeah. what's new specifically? Oh, yeah, for, yeah. please, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, explain, some people are Well, there's some commentary that. on yeah. snarky comments, but, right. but it's a product, it's not a rebrand of something it's else. It's not. Explain it's that. Not a, yeah, so what we did is, let, let me start off why, why we started Aria. So we said, okay, native public managing environments, native public cloud environments, and cloud native applications is a different ball game more ephemeral workloads, very large scale, highly fragmented data. So we looked at that problem, rounds up, and said we need to have a management solution that solves that problem, focused on native public cloud and cloud native apps. And the core to solving that problem was, you can't just solve it for one cloud, or you can't solve it for one discipline. When I say discipline, when you think about management, what do you manage? You're managing to optimize cost, you're managing to optimize performance, you're managing to optimize your security. And you're managing to speed up the delivery. That is it. And so we said we'll have a new look to this management. And what we have done with ARIA is we have introduced a brand new platform, which we call ARIA Hub, powered by ARIA Graph, which allows you to deliver this on this management challenges by creating a map of your environment, a near real-time map of your environment, and then we are able to, once we know what an application looks like and how it maps to the infrastructure, we can go and query other subsystems to tell you what is the cost of an application, what is the performance of an application, creating a common understanding. This, now it's that, a new architecture, I just wanted to get that out there. It's a federated, new architecture. And a graph database? Yes, it's a okay. new architecture, a federated um, a, a, a platform that not only gives you a map of your environment, but it federates into other sources to pull that data together. Right. Now one of the data sources that it federates into is of course also VRealize, yeah, yeah. cloud yeah. health, you plug in tons of observability, it. you plug everything into it. Yeah. And as part of the announcement, we didn't just announce a platform, we also announced a set of cross-cutting solutions. Because we said, okay, what is the power of the platform? The big thing is it removes the swivel chair management. It allows you to answer questions you couldn't answer before. And so, so we'll share meaning going from one app to another, one app, logging one, in, exactly, credentials. Exactly, logging in, credentials, yeah. and you don't have a common understanding of an app across those, so now you hire people who do integration buses, <laughs> right? All kinds of problems. 
So uh, the three new end-to-end -end solutions we are announcing also in along with the platform, these are brand new. One is something called ARIA guardrails. So when I have development environments, today for example, my I do development on public cloud as well as private cloud. I have thousands of accounts, each one with its own security rules, each one with its own policies. After I initially deploy the account, it becomes a nightmare to manage that. Yeah. So what ARIA guardrails allows you to do is set up these multi-cloud environments with the right policies, and not only is it about one-time provisioning, but it is maintaining them on a runtime And those basis. credentials are also risk, because you have a, a password on the dark web that's exposed on one, and you've got to change it, and, and there's so many things exactly. going on. Exactly, exactly. Security, which brings me up to the point of, you know, we were talking, that we're going to see Tom uh, later yes. on security, um, but so. we heard earlier, why was the security in the keynote? Oh, it's table stakes, that's what Zia said, but we're like, okay, I get that. So let's just say that security is table stakes. There's a big trend towards security as a state of yes. something at a, at a given time, and that CISOs and CSOs are going to defensibility, yes. meaning being defensible yes. all the time yes. as an ongoing thing, which is not just running a pen test once a week, yes. like multiple testing, real testing, not simulation. Yes to be secure. Yes. So it's not about being secure, it's about having security, Baked but defensibility in. is the action now, not. Yeah, yeah. You, does that, how does that fit into this? Because this seems to like uh, be in this wheelhouse uh, of uh, management. No, I think you're bringing a very important point, which is the security as a post the fact item is no longer right, right? You want to bake in security. This is the shift left of security that we talk about. Mm -hmm. When you're building an application, and you're deploying code in your test, you want to say, hey, what is the security? Is it secure, is it meeting my guardrails? Then when you deploy it, from an operations perspective, also it is a security concern. It's not just a security team's concern now. Mm -hmm. So is my configuration right? Is my configuration secure? Has, is it drifting? It's never a snapshot in time. It's constantly you have to look at it. Is it drifting? And that is exactly what we're doing also with ARIA. So that's because part of are, the solution you're talking about in the guardrails. Within. Being able to maintain the secure configuration, right? Now, as I said, there's always a security discipline, yeah. which is done by security teams, but you also want operations teams and development teams to enforce security in their respective practices, and that's what ARIA allows mm. you to do. So the question on multi-cloud comes in. Okay, so this is all good, by the way. We love that shift left again. Great developer, and I would argue, actually we are arguing on theCUBE, that DevOps is the development environment for cloud native, so the IT operations, once called ops, is now in dev, just saying. <laughs> yes. And then data ops and security ops are now the new IT, because that's where the hard problems are. So how do you look at the data side of it, as well as security, in your view of multi-cloud? Because you know, hybrid cloud, I can see the steady state between you know, on-premises and cloud, if it's operating cloud-like. But now you're starting to look at spanning clouds. Yes, yes. Not full spanning workloads, that's not there yet, but certainly people have multiple clouds. Yeah. But when you, data seems to be the first thing spanning, not necessarily the app itself, but how do you guys view that multi-cloud aspect of what you're managing? I mean, yeah. how do you look at that? I think there are different angles to it, right? You can look at it from the data angle and you look at it on how, the, uh, how protected a data is. For us, when you look at management discipline, it is all from the perspective of configurations. If I have configured my environment correctly, then you should not be able to do something that destroys or the data, right? So getting the configuration right when you're developing the app, getting the configuration right when you're provisioning the app, and then getting the configuration right even when you're doing day two and ongoing operations, that is what we bring to the table. And to some extent that ARIA visibility that I was talking about, an ARIA graph, a near real-time view of the configuration state and its dependencies mm -hmm. is very critical. Can so now I can ask questions. Is there a misconfiguration? By the way, the answer is yes. Say. Yeah, that now, happens a lot by the way too, right? Yeah, <laughs> which, which exposes me. And then you can say, hey, is there user activity associated with that misconfigured object? Now suddenly you have go, go to a red alert. So not only is something misconfigured, but there is user activity associated with the misconfigured data, you know this is something that I this have to This is where AI sings 
beautifully because beautifully. once you have the configuration baseline done, yes. it's like securing the S3 bucket, which is like a knee, has to be a, like brushing your teeth, it's got to be a habit. Exactly. You know, it's like you just don't even think about it. You just don't leave an S3 bucket open. It's got to be simplified you know. because you're, we're asking the devs now to be security pros. Correct. Secure the runtime, secure the paths, you know, secure the containers, and so they need help. You know, this is not what they wake up in the morning passionate about. Right, and that is where the guardrails comes totally, in. Totally, yeah. So a, a developer, why should they care? They should just say, look, I'm developing for uh, uh, the credit card industry, I need a PCI compliant environment. And then let us take care yeah, of defining exactly. that environment, deploying that environment, managing that environment mm -hmm. on an ongoing basis. They should be building code, yeah. right? But there is a change also which is, in the past these were like two different islands and two different views. With ARIA Graph, we also have created this unified API that a developer could query or an ops could query to create a common understanding of the environment. So you're not looking at you know, the elephant, one the trunk and the other one the tail. You're looking at it in a common way. Can you talk about the collaboration between Tanzu and ARIA portfolios? Because obviously the VMware customers are investing in Tanzu. A lot of stuff's coming out of the oven. We heard some, Dave heard some stuff from Chris Wolf. He's going to come on tomorrow. Um, and Raghu was hinting at some other stuff that's not yet public, but you know, this <laughs> yeah. thing's happening. Things happening, a lot of things you know, happening. You, you know, announcements happened years ago, yes. last year, now some fruit's coming off the tree. This is a hot product, Aria, it makes a lot of sense for the customers. Where's the cloud native stuff kicking, connecting in? What's oh my the, God. give us the overview. Yeah, where's the, where's it the is connection? Lots and lots of connections. So, you have a beautiful Kubernetes environment and a cloud native platform. You have accelerated app development. <laughs> now you're building more apps, more microservices based apps, more fragmented data, more information. So think of ARIA as an uh, envelope around all of this. So wherever you are, whether you are building an application, deploying an application, managing an application, retiring an application, through that life cycle, we can bring that management. So what we are doing with Tanzu is with the platform, development platform, now we can hook in management with a common perspective earlier in the life cycle. Mm -hmm. I don't have to wait for it to go to production mm -hmm. to start saying, is it secure? Is it configured? How is it performing? What is my cost trade-off? As a developer, I've decided to, to fix a latency issue, I'm going to add a new region, or I'm going to scale out a particular tier. Do I know how much it'll cost me? Can I give you that right at your fingertips, potentially even within the development platform and within the IDE. That's the power, right? So bringing ARIA so and Tanzu together. not a lot of together. heavy lifting on the developers. It's pretty much almost like a query to a, exactly. a, a database or Give something. Give it a simple API that they can just query as part of their development process. Yeah. So by bringing ARIA and Tanzu and really ARIA enveloping Tanzu, yeah. Right, you're able to bring that power you know, to it's, the developer. It's, I just always smile because you know, I remember we, we have a group called the Cloudorati, the early yeah, yeah. OG founders. Cloudorati. Of, uh, yeah. Early days of cloud. And we were talking about infrastructure as code yes. way back yeah. when, and yes. finally it's actually happening. So it's what happening. you're describing is infrastructure as code because now there's more complexity happening under the hardened top. Exactly. And you know, services are being turned on and off automatically. Yes. And sometimes you might not even know what's going on. Exactly. But if you have guardrails. But you have to discover the state, know something has turned on, understand the implication, and then synthesize it, synthesize it down to the insight for the user. You know, a lot of people have been complaining about uh, other older companies like Splunk's of the world, um, who have great logging technology for uh, Gen 1 cloud, but now these new logging, logging yes. becomes a problem. Can you yes. talk about how you guys are handling that, give confidence or yeah. uh, explain that there's, everything's going to be yeah. logged properly? Yeah, <laughs> so, so really, look, there are, um, three disciplines that we have, management disciplines. Like it, ultimately, there are thousands of names, but it boils down to you're managing the cost, you're managing the security, you're managing the performance of your application. That is it, right? So, uh, what we found is, when you think of these disciplines as siloed solutions, you can't ask a simple question as, what is my cost performance trade-off? You can't ask a simple question as, hey, I'm improving performance, well, how, what is the implication of security? And that's when you start building complex solutions that say, okay, let me collect log from here, let me collect this from here, then let me correlate and normalize an application definition and tell you something. And then put it in a spreadsheet. And put it in a spreadsheet <laughs> finally <laughs> for some reads. manual work. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, one of the pillars is about managing performance. We have very powerful capabilities today in our portfolio. 
Tanzu Observability, which is part of ARIA portfolio. We realize Log, which is part of ARIA portfolio. Networks, insights, and operations. So with the common, when you, when you have a common language, we have a common language, we understand each other. Similarly with ARIA Graph and ARIA Hub, we have creating this common language. So once we create a common language, all the various observability and log solutions have a meaning. They have relevance. And so we are able to take the noise from all these systems and synthesize it down to what we call business insights. And that's what is one of the big uh, announcement as part of ARIA. Awesome. Take data, which we have lots of, and convert it to information. Give us the bumper sticker on why VMware. Well, I, I'll tell you, um, when you talk about various public clouds, each public cloud has their native solutions. I've got Control Tower, I've got uh, CloudWash, CloudTrail, different solutions. And some of the hyperscalers are also expanding their solutions to other cloud. I think VMware, in a way, from a multi-cloud perspective, we are in a wonderfully neutral position. Not only do we have a wealth of technology and assets that we can bring to the game, but we can also do it evenly across all clouds. So, so look at something like cost. Do you trust one of the hyperscalers to tell you that what is the cost comparison between them and another hyperscaler? Mm -hmm. That is where the VMware value comes in. I think people are just trying to figure out what the cost of one cloud is. <laughs> exactly, exactly, that is often. People make money doing that as a job. No, no, definitely, yeah. even a single cloud, what is the cost? There's so, a cloud economist out there, and we know who he is, Corey, Corey, a friend of theCUBE, he does it for his living, so yes. help people figure out their bill. Exactly. <laughs> just exactly. on one cloud. Exactly, it's one cloud. So being able, we have the unique, position where and the right sets of technologies and experiences to bring that solution to bear across multi-cloud, right? Great, what's Thank your you. vision, real quick, one minute left, what's your vision for the group, what are you investing in, what's your goals, what are you trying to do, obviously the product's new, going to roll that out, what's, yeah. what's the plan? I really, again, uh, the biggest one, the, the, the tagline I talked about, right, I, I, I want to, you know, I'm telling customers, managing stuff is boring, don't waste your time on it, let us take care of it, right? So make the cloud complexity invisible so that you can focus on building your applications. And everything that we do in the business unit is targeted towards that one goal. Because it is not about thing. doing more features, more capabilities, it's are you solving customers' questions? And we start from question down. Pranima, thank you for spending your valuable time here on theCUBE explaining Absolutely. the new news, appreciate it. All right. Get it, all right. Yeah. all right. We'll care. be back <laughs> after lunch, after the short break. Stay more with theCUBE live here in San Francisco for VMware Explorer 22. I'm John, that's Dave. Thank you. <laughs>